Boredom is highly anxiety provoking. First of all, boredom is a rare experience for modern humans because we're constantly distracting ourselves from the present moment and we have an infinite number of ways to do that, right? But boredom is really, I think, an important and necessary experience. But it is scary because when you allow yourself to be bored, um, let's say you were had that list of all the things you hate to do, but you actually got them all done. Imagine that for a moment. You would be sitting in your house and my guess is you would be terrified because, wow, what am I supposed to do now, right? There's nothing I really have to do. And that is really, really scary. That can feel like free fall. Many people who become addicted to things have this feeling that normal life isn't interesting enough. I think that life for humans has always been hard. But I think that now it's harder in unprecedented ways. And I think that the way that life is is really hard now is that it actually is really boring. And the reason that it's boring is because all of our survival needs are met. We don't even have to leave our homes to meet every single physical need. You know, as long as you're of a certain level of financial well-being. If you look at leisure time, for example, so people without a high school education have 42% more leisure time than people with a, um, a college degree. My point here is that Life is hard now in this really weird way in that we don't really have anything that we have to do. So we're all forced to make stuff up, you know, whether it's being a scientist or being a doctor or being an Olympic athlete or, you know, climbing Mount Everest. And people really vary in their need for friction. And some people need a lot more than others. And if they don't have it, they're really, really unhappy. And I do think that a lot of the people that I see with addiction and other forms of mental illness are people who need more friction. Like they're unhappy, not necessarily because there's something wrong with their brain, but because their brain is not suited to this world what's so pervasive in our narrative now is like, find your passion, you know, and in a way that's good because it has people out in the world and seeking, but in a way it can also be misleading in the sense that I think people aren't entirely aware that the world is a hard place and that, and that life is hard and that we're all kind of making it up. To me, one of the most significant findings in neuroscience in the last 75 years is that pleasure and pain are co-located, which means the same parts of the brain that process pleasure also process pain. And they work like a balance. So when we feel pleasure, our balance tips one way. When we feel pain, it tips in the opposite direction. And one of the overriding rules governing this balance is that it wants to stay level. So it doesn't want to remain tipped very long to pleasure or to pain. And with any deviation from neutrality, the brain will work very hard to restore a level balance or what scientists call homeostasis. And the way the brain does that is with any stimulus to one side, there will be a tip in equal and opposite amount to the other side. So like I like to watch YouTube videos when I watch YouTube videos of American Idol, it tips to the side of pleasure. And then when I stop watching it, I have a come down, which is a tip to the equal and opposite amount on the other side. And that's that moment of wanting to watch one more YouTube video because we're mostly not aware of it. And it's also reflexive. So we it's not something that consciously happens or that we're aware of unless we really begin to pay attention. And, and when we begin to to pay attention, we really can become very aware of it in the moment. Again, it's like a falling away, like you're on social media and you know you get a good tweet of something and then you can't stop yourself because there's this awareness, a latent awareness that as soon as I disengage from this behavior, I'm going to experience a kind of a pain. And of course, one way to combat that is to do it more. And here's really the key. If I keep indulging again and again and again, ultimately, I have so much on the pain side that I've essentially reset my brain to what we call like an anhedonic or lacking in joy type of state, which is a dopamine deficit state. So that's really the way in which pain can become the main driver is because I've indulged so much in these high reward behaviors or substances that my brain has had to compensate by way down regulating my own dopamine such that 
even when I'm not doing that drug, I'm in a dopamine deficit state, which is akin to a clinical depression and a lot of mental preoccupation with using again or getting the drug. That's the piece there. There's the single use, which easily passes, but it's the chronic use that can then reset really our dopamine thresholds. And then nothing is enjoyable. Then everything sort of pales in comparison to this one drug that I want to keep doing. I think that is really what I want people to tune into and and get an awareness around. Because once you tune into it, you can see it a lot. And then when you begin to see it, it gives people kind of a way to imagine what they're experiencing on a neurobiological level and understand it. And in that understanding, get some mastery over it, which is really what this is all about. 